Welcome to the Mission City Podcast. It has been an incredible six weeks going through our Yes series. In today's session, campus pastors Dave Cash and Chuck Foster talk about some of their biggest takeaways from this series. Even before we get into it, we want to hear your stories. So in the comment section down below, share how God has moved in your life throughout this season. And if you're just listening, head over to YouTube and hop into the comment section there. All right, let's go in and get things started. Here are Dave and Chuck. Good morning, Dave. What's going on, man? Hey, Chuck. How you doing this morning? I am well. I'm it's cold. Well. What's up with this weather? I thought I thought spring has sprung. <laughs> it was supposed to be the first day of spring not too long ago, right? Hey, welcome to winter of 2023. Again. Welcome to the, Texas. The third one. Yes. The third yeah, winter. The third or fourth like, winter. Kind of like the Hobbits, like the second breakfast. It's it's the third winter. I like second breakfast. <laughs> I, I would prefer that's a second a, breakfast yeah, that's not a bad third thing. winter. I would <laughs> like a second breakfast over third winter, if it's my choice. But I don't get to make that call. But you know what else uh, we got coming up is uh, opening day baseball. Da -da 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 -da. Tomorrow is opening day for well, us. I'm excited. Predictions. Who, who do you think? Uh, well, I think the Rangers got better. You got to think that just improving will get them that playoff spot. I just, I just don't see it. I, I, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out. The season hadn't started. How many wins did they have last year? I was like. 60 something or whatever they, they may like, get they may get to 80 wins i think they'll you know you 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 get three they have actually four new starting pitchers if each one of them just wins three or four more games that puts them in close to what the wild card would be so that's yeah. what i think i think they'll i don't think they're going to challenge for the west crown this year but Oh, well, because they're going to go through the Strohs, baby. Yeah, and, you no, know, they're not gonna... it's hard to beat the cheaters. You know, it's hard to beat people that are allowed to well, cheat you all know. the time, you know. Well, <laughs> success, you know, success breeds a little bit of uh, resentment from the other side. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it goes. I understand that. But I'm, I always look forward to opening day. I, I do. I, 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 I've, I've been to a few opening days in my life when I lived in Houston a long time ago. I used to go to both the Rangers home opener and the Astros home opener. Every year, back whenever I, before I was in ministry, I'd fly to Houston, go to opening day. Now, that would be difficult if they opened. Um, well, they usually same one day. For some reason, the Rangers usually play their opening day during the day, and the Strohs used to play their opening day in the evening. And so I would have that opportunity to sometimes make both games, but a lot of times I would just do the home opener. One would be on the road, one would be home. But I always, I always enjoyed going. That's just a fun time. Yeah. Yep, just like spring. Like, like I'm, I, I want to go do spring training one time. Oh, I'd love, I'd love to spend. Just sit up. I'd spend all day at the there. ballpark. I would too. I'd get there real early. Watch all the, watch all the AAA games. I love it. I would, yeah. I'd be. That would be. That would be a something that when my wife and I have talked about when we retire, yeah. hitting all the barbecue places that we've retire. always wanted to go to, and then spend retire. either Arizona or Florida. And just probably more of Arizona because that's where the Rangers are. So I'd probably rather go to Arizona. I have some cousins that live in Scottsdale, and they've invited us out to go stay, and then watch play golf early, and then go watch go watch. Uh, be a good time. Watch the spring training games. That'd be it fun. Would be, I'd like it would to be do a that. lot of fun. You know what's been fun too is this Yes series that we're coming to a conclusion. Yeah. Sunday. Sunday will be it. Yeah. Sunday uh, will be it. Um, I've enjoyed it. I really have. I've enjoyed this yes here. It has challenged me. I think that's, I think that's always a good thing to be challenged in our faith. Yeah, I think that's the biggest takeaway again. I have really been challenged in a new way. Stretched, really stretched. Um, and and I think I think one of the things that we want to talk about was you know what are some of our big takeaways, um, that you walk away with from from the yes series and really what God's doing in stretching you. I know God's moving me in some new, new directions in terms of the way I think about giving, the way I think about serving, the way I think about surrender and, and wanting to be. You know, I, I, think, I think all of us want to be, uh, we, want, we, want, we want that blessing from God. Now, when I say blessing, that's not, that's not meaning that I'm going to, if mean. I give, that I'm going to get some yeah. financial reward. That's not what I'm talking about. Talking about yeah, that prosperity living gospel in, doesn't play out. No, it doesn't. Yeah. But living in God's favor because um, I, I'm I'm spending time with Him. I think 
we're blessed. The Bible says that we are blessed when we um, obey. Mm-hmm. You know, it talks about that in Luke that if we, if you know, blessed is the person who knows knows the, uh, what God's God's word says and obeys it. Right. And when we do those things and when we live out uh, the way God is commanding us to live, I think God God wants to bless us. God God's a God of blessing. And uh, he, he for desires sure. it for our lives. So I think those are those are certainly big things that I'm taking away um, from this week as well. Well, I mean, living it out. You know, I think that's what the challenge has sort of been is uh, not just knowing. Um, because we do know a lot of things being in, you know, I've been in church now for a long time. I've been working at a church for a long time now. Um, and so I know the word. You know, not as well as I probably should, obviously. None of us do, probably. But I'm no theologian uh, here. I know that. Yeah, I mean, well, it's one thing knowing the Word of God. It's another thing living it out. And I think this series has challenged us as um, followers of Jesus Christ to, to truly live out your faith. You know, last week on the podcast, we talked about influence. What kind of influence are you being? And, and that's caused me to take a look inside to realize sometimes there's people watching and uh, what I say on Facebook and how I act at a ball game. And, and uh, you know, sometimes sometimes they're looking to try and find fault. but uh, And I'm not going to be perfect by any means. Ooh. I know that shocks you that I'm not perfect. Well. but Because uh, you see perfection in me, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm perfect in the eyes of God because of my relationship with Christ, because I've inherited the righteousness of Christ. That's yeah, when God looks deal. at me and looks at my heart, I'll, he, he has to see. I praise he's Jesus because if he sees me, we're in trouble. Ooh. <laughs> You're in trouble. Ooh. No, I'm kidding. Yes. But, I mean, that's that's the thing is about the influence and stuff. And as you said, you know, the takeaways, you know, I've loved hearing the testimonies of people. This last Sunday morning we had the Martinez's, Martinez's, is, 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 uh, Armando and Andrea, and one of the lines that he used in that, and we'll have a link that you can you can see this, but one of the lines he said was how Jesus is all in on us. And when he died on the cross for our sins, and that made me, you know, evaluate: Am I all in? Because you know, you can be at church on a regular basis, you can go through the motions and not really be all in because it hasn't transformed the way you think or live. And yes, has has sort of challenged me to live in such a way that uh, I'm just my faith is played out before you know not in a acting way but i mean because i'm so transformed it just plays out in everything i do well the gospel has that effect i mean transformation it's transformative you cannot you cannot um read god's word hear god's word be around people who are um in god's word and not be transformed by it because um nobody is we're not standing still in life right and so um, I've always learned that, hey, that when, when we are learning and we're, we're, we're trying to wrap our brain and our heart around something, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect everything that we do. And so if we're, if, if we're putting our mind on things that are not of God's word, we're being transformed by that. And then I, I firmly believe that if, we, if we'll spend some time in God's word, if we're obedient to that, and the transformative power of the gospel uh, is, it's incredible. And you, you see it play out uh, in our lives. And, and I, I think that's what's, that's what's happening in yes with me is because this is, my yes wasn't just about giving. It's about, hey, I'm going to spend more time in God's word. Yeah, it's about surrender, not it's just, like, like it's just I, surrendering everything. Like I know? thought, like, oh, I read God's word. I read it. I read it all the time. I'm, I mean, it's, it's what I do. I, I enjoy doing that. Well, I've read it to the point where it's become routine. Hmm. Have I? Am I now spending what? What kind of quality time am I spending in God's word now? Am I just reading it to right. read it because that's what I'm commanded to do, or am now am I being obedient in in absorbing and living it, like taking that word of God and say, God, use that in my life. Right. Um, well, I love to. When we had the advanced commitment on Friday, um, we'll also show some a link to where you can see some pictures there from how awesome that was. But the advanced commitment night, uh, Pastor Matt and Becky, um, when he said, you know, 
I grew up in a minister's household. My father was a minister, you know, uh, Matt's dad, Ron Serber, was a great uh, education minister at some churches and so forth, and just a very godly man. And, uh, you know, Matt's parents brought them up to teach them tithing. Becky's dad, Becky's dad was the the pastor at, at First Baptist Lake Jackson for a long time. So they grew up, hey, you tithe and you give. And one of the things they talked about is like, that's something that we always did. We didn't even think about it anymore. <clears throat> and so it, it had become what you had said. It was like uh, just a, a, the box you check off or just normal routine. And they talked about how they were challenged to really take a look. And, and they talked about they didn't go on a ski trip this year. And they didn't do certain things because they wanted to lead out. And that's what I love about the leadership at Mission City Church is they don't just talk about it. They live it out, you know, as I was talking about earlier. And I love the fact that he said we were challenged and we decided that's what we were going to do. We were not going to take these vacations. We're not going to do these in order to reach more people with the gospel, plant more churches. And, and you know, we look at our next-gen uh, ministry uh, with students and kids and just the fact that we want to add to the staff and add to our buildings and create a, a more dynamic ministries that reach more students and kids for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so I love that we heard that. That was a big takeaway for me to hear our pastor talk about how routine his giving had become mm-hmm. and how he was convicted in that. Yeah, and, and, and I, I think you and I would both agree that it, it, it can become quickly routine yeah, you can it, set it up to where you're just shooting that text you know mission yeah. city to 77977 that's what we do we're just like boom, blink and uh this is this is challenged us because my wife was talking about how whenever uh she used to make out the checks for our giving we would pray over that check and then we would we would turn it and now it's become so routine we're just like yeah there it is but now we, it's challenged us as well you know to go okay let's take a look at this mm-hmm. and and when we look at the widow and the two Midas, and, and one of the best quotes from the series two was, it's not the size of the gift, it's the size of the sacrifice. You know, because, right. every, you know, some people's gift um, could look to me like, oh, wow, that's huge. You know what I mean? But to them, it's like, yeah, that was really nothing. Some people's gift doesn't look as big on a spreadsheet, but it's like, man, that was really sacrificial for them. It's like the first church I pastored had a lot of farmers and ranchers in there, and a lot of uh, people that grow up on a, on a farm, if they break even on the year, that's a good year. That was the goal is to break even. And I actually had people in my first church that didn't turn on the air conditioner and things like that in order to give to the church. Mm. They would they would plant an extra field and you know of cotton or whatever soybean whatever and the money from that would be what they gave to the church and they would till that ground and everything and that's how the church the first church I pastored got their first piano that the church ever had was because they planted this extra crop and that's how they got it when you think of sacrifice and your love for the bride of Christ that's an incredible story in itself too right what we you know what we give up and I don't want to say, I hate they use the word give up um, for God, but the sacrificial things that we do that we go without, go without a vacation, go without um, a second car. Uh, I've seen families do that. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm always amazed by that. Like they, they put more hardship on their family. I know that you had talked about it's one of the things that y'all were doing was not eating out as much or right. at all. Right. Uh, because that had become like the norm. Yeah, we just got to where we were con- <laughs> like, I was telling my wife on Saturday, it was like, hey, where are we going to breakfast? And then it was like, hey, let's run by such and such for lunch. And then for dinner, we're like taking the family somewhere. And it's like, that day I spent $300 eating out, you know, kind of yeah. a deal. You know, when you have a family of of four like we are, you know, some people's families are larger. When you go out to eat, you, it doesn't even matter if you go to Chick-fil-A. I've got, a, I've got teenagers, and so they're, they're at this point to where it's 20 bucks. For just them at Chick Fil A or or McDonald's or somewhere, you think, hey, fast food's cheap. It ain't anymore, you know, kind of a deal. No. So that was one of the things we looked at. We were like, hey, we eat out so much because I didn't have a whole lot of stored resources. I don't have, you know, I just never have, you know, I've been in ministry for a long time, so I don't have anything, you know, kind Talk of a deal. So. I'm, a, I'm a former teacher. I yeah, get, you're I get it. I get and, it. And I'm married to a teacher, so, you so know, you, you get got, it. We've you been got, in, you got double you know, whammy we're a double right whammy, there. so yeah. it's like we don't really have that, but 
that was one of the things that we really looked at. And it was something God had laid up on our heart to, to just really look at. And so it was kind of funny. We went in you know, a couple of our, our son's baseball games were like at noon and we packed peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in a brown paper bag and sat in the stands and that's what we ate. And, you know, it was like, Oh, I left my bottle of water in the car. And most of the time I go, I'll just go buy a drink at the deal. But I did, I was like, I'm just going to hike all the way back to the car, get our water, you know, hey, you walked off that peanut butter and jelly. I did. Water. I got to walk good. it off anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, but I mean, those are just the things that you think about. And one, one of the thoughts that I always have is just the souls of eternity. You know, when I look at the children in my neighborhood, you know, and I think about they're going to spend eternity somewhere. Mm. Um, that's why it's important that we're trying to reach that next generation because we want them to – we want to take as many people to heaven as we possibly can, right? Yep, absolutely. And that's the call of the yeah. church. And so that's been a big takeaway for me, the the surrender thing. And I loved uh, AJ and Holly's story too. Um, Dara, that was a great story. Amazing story, and, and and they didn't even get into like a lot of the things that that you know I'm I'm probably not at liberty to, to tell a lot of their story, but if if you only not. knew if you only knew what their what God has done in their in their lives in their circumstances, I mean it's it's incredible, and and I'm I'm moved by that. Those stories move me to want to live more for Jesus, because I see people who are in a whole lot more tough difficult circumstances right. than I am and they're and they're living they're living it out um and trusting God and having what's really cool and I and I I think this is the biggest one of the biggest takeaways for me is in the difficulties giving and still finding joy right because I think if 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 you're not finding joy in giving, if you're being like, I'm doing it out of some sort of duty obligation, then, then, I, then don't give. Don't give. Don't do it. You should find joy in that. Right. And they are finding absolute joy in their circumstance, giving, doing what God's calling yeah, them. Yeah, well, you heard Mark and Alma White. Oh, my goodness. You know, they talked about, you know, the joy in giving. And she, you could just tell in both their faces yeah, how joyful they are to serve. And, and Alma the next week was in Mexico on a mission trip after that video, you know, and she was there doing vacation Bible school and, uh, you know, she has a local business and, and that she's the, you know, she's a, a business owner and she took time off to go to Mexico, you know, I'm putting her money where her mouth is, you know, going to, to, to Mexico on that mission trip. And Mark serves every week on our security team. And, and, uh, you know, they were with us in Israel and hung out, you know, just great, you know, just to watch their hearts and, and, you know, they talked about the joy and how they, you know, gave to these things and saw these people come to know Christ and, and just to watch the joy in the faces of people that talk about the privilege it is to give to the bride of Christ in order to make much of Jesus and to see people come to know Christ. And, and, and again, it's not just about a financial gift. It's about the time that they take and the time you put into it. Because when you own your own business and you're like, Hey, I'm going to be gone for a week, that really puts you behind in your, mm -hmm. you know, day to day things. And so it's not just about the, the money that it takes to get there or the money that you give, but also your time is the most valuable asset you have because, you know, you could lose money and get it back. You know, somebody could break in your house and steal something, you'll buy it and you, you know, replace it. You don't get time back. You know, you don't, you don't get to, you know, get in your DeLorean with, you know, in the, with the flux capacitor and go back in time and, <laughs> and get that back. You know, you, that's the, that's, that's a valuable resource because we don't get time back. I mean, how often do we look back and think about, you know, when I'm, when I'm at the baseball field, I, 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 man, I wish I could go back and do it right this time or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But you can't really go back. But what's awesome is when we invest in the things of God, that's an eternal, that's an eternal investment. I can't think of anything else besides the word of God and, and the things of God that we can invest our time, talents, and treasure in that has eternal return on nothing else does yeah you get the nail on the head about about time the desire to go back is always there but here's the deal is because we can't go back why not right now where you're at whatever's going on in your life start now right start now i mean i think hey look i i i've been where most people are in their giving afraid to give 
looking at a budget, see no way it goes. There's no way that this equals out. I've been there. Cheryl and I have been there, and it's oh, it too. is a it is a difficult thing. And then some. Then and we're told, hey, we're 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 to be generous. Right. Couldn't make it work until we just stepped out and did it. And then it was amazing. And I'm not talking about all financial blessings. No, I know. But yeah. it, it's cool because God's God does not want us to go without need. He's going to take care of us. Sure. Um, we may have to do away with some wants like fast food and, and uh, right. or whatever. But God's going to God's going to meet us, meet our <clears throat> needs. He, he desires to meet our needs. So, well, I like what you said, too. You said. Yeah, you can't go back, but from this moment forward, you can start making an impact. It reminds me, back in the day when I was doing sales and marketing, used to listen to Zig Ziglar a lot. One of the things Zig talked about was he said that a lady had came to him, and, and she's like, you know, I'm, I'm 38 years old, and if I went to law school now, you know, I'm going to be 43 by the time I'm a lawyer, so I don't think I'm going to go. And Zig said, you know what, in five years, you're going to be 43 anyway. Why not be a lawyer too? <laughs> and she just kind of had this look on her face like, I never thought about it that way. You know, it's like, you you know, that time's going to come anyway, unless, you know, the Lord calls you home or whatever. But, you know, yeah, that that's going to happen anyway. Wouldn't you rather, and I think that's what we think about as a follower. Well, I haven't really been on a mission trip and now I'm 50 years old or I'm 60 years old. You know what? There are people that are older than that that go on a mission trip or, or maybe you feel like, well, I just can't go physically. You can still give, you can still pray for it. You can still, there's still a lot of things that you can do to serve God out of the overflow of our hearts. It's never too late. It's never too late. I had a, to we had give. a guy that walked in uh, the Northwest yesterday and 78 year old man and he'd get most of his life he had he had uh not lived for the lord got drugged to church when he was a kid he was old enough to drive instead of going to church he went to the pool hall he's what he's told what he told me he said but he gave his life to jesus yesterday wow that's awesome it's 78 right and so now he he's here he is 78 thinking man i want to make an impact on the kingdom you're never too old That's right. to make your first impact. If God him. has you here, God has something for you to do. And he, man, he left yesterday so excited. He's going to get baptized on Easter. Awesome. I mean, what a testimony yeah. that it's never too late to make an impact in the kingdom. Well, and, and we talked about regeneration a little bit last week. Mm -hmm. We had some first time people at regeneration this last week and they're, they've been with addiction for so long and it becomes just who you are. It defines you, sort of. Don't let that define you. Let Jesus Christ define you and break free from that. And so it was awesome to see some new people going, you know what, I'm not going to be defined by this anymore. Yeah, I've been doing this for a while, but it's not too late to get clean. It's not too late to get sober. And it's certainly not too late to give your life to Jesus Christ. You want to you want to do that because it'll change everything about you in the best way possible. Not too late to be obedient. That's right. That's what right. Call so us to do. This has been a great week. I appreciate you. You too, man. Thank you for being a good friend. Yeah, I can't wait to see what happens through yeah. Commitment Sunday and so forth. Man, we'll talk more about that next week. So Excited thanks for to watching. See you. Love y'all. See you. Thanks for watching this episode of the Mission City Podcast. This is the part where we ask you to do all the YouTube things like like the video, comment down below, and share with a friend. Seriously, though, we are so thankful for you tuning in. You can click here to catch up on all things yes and click here to subscribe for more of this kind of content. See you guys next week.